Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. We know Election Day is here and you have almost exactly three hours to make your vote count if you have not already. We're taking a closer look at some of the biggest races both here in Siouxland and beyond in our top story at five. We begin our coverage in Sioux City with the race for City Council. Three seats tonight are up for grabs. Incumbents Dan Moore and Alex Waters are running alongside newcomers Ike Rayford and Matthew O'Kane. Nine candidates are running for the Sioux City Community School Board. Voters are asked to select just three on their ballots. Again, the polls close tonight at 8. That's central time. And you can find the latest results as they come in online on our website right now. Of course, at SiouxlandProud.com or check it out on the KCAU 9 mobile news app. And we'll have a live wrap up of election results coming up tonight right here at 10. Labor shortages are happening across the country, we know, but a northwest Iowa city is short of a mayor. The city of Milford had no candidates on the ballot for mayor today, so the next elected official will be decided by a write-in vote. Steve Anderson has been the mayor there for the last four years, but told the city officials he would not be running for re-election, but says he would accept the position if elected again by a popular vote. The mayor of Esterville has announced his resignation, but... His name remains on that ballot for today's election. Mayor Joseph May bid farewell to the city in a video message on Facebook saying he's resigning to work at a Catholic health care ministry. The opportunity presented to me won't present itself again for a while if I don't take this. So I have to. It has been an honor being your mayor. It has been a great joy. I'm so proud of the work we've done. We're going to miss you, Esterville. If May were to win this election, he would serve his term until his resignation. Of course, there are many variables. You can see the other alternatives posted on our website right now. Again, that's SiouxlandProud.com. Meanwhile, voters in Minneapolis are deciding whether or not to replace the city's police department with a new Department of Public Safety. This election comes more than a year after George Floyd's death launched a movement to defund or abolish police across the country. Supporters of this change argue a complete overhaul of policing is necessary. Opponents argue no concrete plan has been laid out and they fear crime could rise in communities already affected by gun violence. Both sides have spent millions of dollars on advertising. We have most certainly been talking to people in Minneapolis for months, months and months and months about the necessity to expand the uh, public safety within the city of Minneapolis. Results from the ballot question are expected to roll in sometime later tonight. The 2020 U.S. Census missed an estimated 1.6 million people, but given hurdles posed by the pandemic and natural disasters, the undercount was actually smaller than expected. This is according to analysis by a think tank, estimating there was a 0.5% undercount. Now, if this holds true, it would be greater than the 0.01% undercount in the 2010 census, but in the same range as the undercount of 2000. The official undercount of census will not be known until next year when census bureaus release a report card on their count. And another news tonight, a worker at a Norfolk manufacturing plant suffered a fatal injury on the job. A 911 call was made from Continental Tires plant on Saturday afternoon. The Madison County Sheriff's Office says 50 year old Keith Polensky of the Randolph area fell from a scissor lift and hit his head. Witnesses say an automated crane struck that lift, causing it to tip over, resulting in Polensky's injuries. He was taken to the emergency room where he later died. This incident tonight remains under investigation. The South Dakota Retailers Association is offering a cash incentive of $1,000 to try to alert state workers to fill jobs. This cash payout would supplement any hiring bonuses or other incentives offered by employers by an individual business. The first incentive installment of $500 would be paid after 90 consecutive days of employment in South Dakota, averaging at least 30 hours worked per week. The second $500 would be paid out after 180 days of employment. And it's time now to turn our attention to the weather department. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson standing by for us, Scott. Another really pleasant November day, a sun for most of us, and 
the winds really not kicking up, so it felt nice. Yeah, it did, especially this afternoon, Sophie, but it was certainly chilly out there this morning. The temperature in Sioux City fell down to 18 degrees. That is the coldest reading that we've had since April 1st of this year. The high temperature this afternoon was able to lift up to 50, so that felt pretty nice with the sunshine. Checking out highs around the area today, 40s and 50s blanket the map, 51 in Norfolk, 46 in Spencer. Overnight lows won't be quite as cold as those are expected to tumble into the middle and upper 20s with the onset of some more clouds. A small chance of showers tomorrow and then some beautiful weather coming our way this weekend. Much more in the 9 on 9. Sophie. Thanks a lot, Scott. Well, uh, Siouxland College is offering free counseling for its students tonight. Little Priest Tribal College did hold a ribbon cutting ceremony for its new counseling center. Student Rochelle May there says this resource will help her and hopefully many other students. Going through counseling, I found it to be useful to talk about what was going on in my personal life because there's there's a lot and I think students really should come down here and use this. These services will be provided by Morningstar Counseling for hours and additional details. You can visit our website right now. We have everything posted at SiouxlandProud.com. Several Siouxland schools came together to contribute to a good cause. Various schools, including Sergeant Bluff Luton, Northwest, and Bishop Heelan, all donated hygiene products to meet the need of Siouxland, which is an organization that helps deliver those products to those people in need. Shelly Ackerman is the organization's director, and tonight she says it's great to have such a supportive community. It, it's an awesome opportunity, I think, to have kids uh, put together something on their own to give back to the people in our community. Ackerman adds that these products will be distributed to more than 40 local agencies sometime next week. Senator Snyder cracking down on criminals who are buying and selling stolen goods online and on those marketplaces. KCAU 9's Washington correspondent Anna Wernicke has the very latest. With just a click of a button, pretty much anything can be purchased online. Cosmetics, electronics, clothes. But Illinois Democrat Dick Durbin says in some cases, it turns out those products are fake. Often these products pose serious health and safety risks to customers who thought they were buying the original product. Durbin and Louisiana Republican Bill Cassidy introduced the Inform Consumers Act. The bill would increase transparency with consumers by requiring marketplaces to verify their high volume third party sellers and then hold them accountable. But Utah Republican Mike Lee says he's concerned the bill would hurt small businesses who may not have the resources to police its sellers. Could the bill end up actually help uh, a end up helping a company like Amazon while making it more difficult for smaller businesses to operate and do so in compliance with the law. We don't want to have barriers that will limit sellers from being able to get online and, and sell their goods. Dane Snowden with the Internet Association says his members, including Amazon, eBay and Etsy, prefer the House version of the bill. But Durbin says it's not strong enough. The proposals that they've made over the years do not strengthen the bill. They strengthen Amazon's hand in avoiding the bill. Uh, I, for one, am not going to stand by and watch this water down any further. We need to move on this. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke, KCAU 9 News. Well, child tax credit was welcomed by many families during the pandemic, and you'll see how much longer it's expected to stick around and why some say it should continue even longer. Coming up in about 10 minutes. And a couple of showers are headed our way tomorrow, but once we get past that, we should expect to see a nice warming trend. In fact, we'll have a small streak of highs in the 60s coming our way this weekend. Join us for the 9 on 9 forecast. That's after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. After a very chilly start to the morning, we warmed up rather nicely and it was helped by some sun and a lack of wind. Yeah, good to see the sunshine out there. I looked out the window this morning and I saw a thick layer of frost on my car. Me and too. Well, it made me appreciate that I didn't have to go anywhere and scrape that away. Here's the view outside now on the Wayne State College camera set up in northeast Nebraska. Bright sunny skies this afternoon have helped propel the temperatures back into the 50s for most. As we check out what's happening in Sioux City at this moment, the temperature is measured at 48. We have a north wind of just three miles 
miles per hour with relative humidity at 37% and the dew point now at 23 degrees. You find that some of the warmer conditions are being observed in northeast Nebraska. That's where we have temperatures hovering just right at about 50 degrees. It's currently 49 in Wayne as well as north to slip downward as we go through the middle of next week. 55 on Wednesday, 44 on Thursday with a decent shot at seeing some showers. Here's a great picture that was sent to us by Jennifer. This was in Crofton, Nebraska. A beautiful sunset in the background. Some harvesting going on in the foreground there. So thanks again to Jennifer for getting that picturesque shot there in Northeast Nebraska. If you have a picture that you want to share with Siouxland, send it in to weather at KCAUTV.com. We'll send you a form to fill out. It's quick and easy to do. Just send it back and we'll show your picture right here on KCAU 9 News all day long. Yes, especially uh, with the seasons changing. It'll be nice to get some of those. Yeah, really a uh, pretty picture there from Jennifer. I love it. really was. Thanks a lot, Scott. Well, one woman is now rethinking in-home care for senior citizens. You'll see how her new business is making such a positive impact coming up in about eight minutes. But first, in Washington, D.C., many concessions are being made to trim Biden's Build Back Better plan. You'll see how those child tax credits affect us and who will benefit coming up next. Welcome back. As negotiations continue over trimming President Joe Biden's Build Back Better spending plan, the expanded child tax credit will only last one year now. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze explains how that affects families across our nation. Finances were already tight for Jennifer Showalter and her two children in West Virginia when the pandemic hit. I had been, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, kind of struggling to get by. Jennifer's husband had recently unexpectedly passed away. When COVID shut down schools and daycares, she stayed home from her job at a cafe to care for the kids. But she says the monthly child tax credit gave her hope. It was enough to help pay for rent, winter clothes, and new books. This child credit's not everything to me, but it sure does help. As part of the expanded child tax credit passed in the American Rescue Plan, the IRS has sent out $15 billion monthly since July to the families of about 60 million qualifying children, $250 per child between the ages of 6 and 17, and $300 per child under age 6. Research shows the first two payments alone helped lift 3.5 million kids out of poverty. President Biden had hoped to make the payments permanent in his Build Back Better spending package. But to appease moderate Democrats and cut the bill's price tag, the expanded child tax credit is now only set to go through 2022. I would tell the people in Washington, think about those families who are impacted. Even $250 increase on someone's rent or someone's utilities, that's big. Melanie Skaskin, a veteran and mother of three in Arizona, says the policy should be permanent, especially as the cost of living is going up. For those who are trying to take advantage of the expanded child tax credit, the IRS has a tool on its website to check your eligibility and register for missing payments. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. News Nation Prime gathers news from across our country at 8 Central every night, and we have a preview. On balance tonight, live from the nation's capital, as results in the Virginia governor's race roll in. If it goes red, it will be the biggest political surprise since 2016. That's on balance tonight. Now here's a look at Dan Abrams Live. Thanks, Leland. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation. Prosecutors make their case against Kyle Rittenhouse, who shot three people in last summer's riots. We explore why he may have a real legal claim to self-defense. That's tonight on Dan Abrams Live. Again, that's all coming up tonight on the fastest growing cable news network in America. That is News Nation, available on the channels on your screen. Or if you're interested, you can check your local guide. Well, after quitting her job, one woman has become a daughter on call. See how her vision for better senior care is now taking off coming up next. One woman's entrepreneurial spirit has sparked a new senior home care service, offering a more personal twist. Izzy Post shows us how one daughter is just a dial away. Jenny McClung left her hospital job after 18 years wanting something more. 
She took a leap of faith and started Dial a Daughter, a home concierge service for anyone who may need a little help around the house. Services could be anywhere from going grocery shopping, um, coming into the house to help you uh, manage your mail and maybe do some bill pay, some personal gift shopping, running errands, um, really anything that a personal assistant would do. She said she got the idea after caring for her grandmothers as a young girl. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, she felt the need to help elderly residents who were more homebound than ever. Her services caught the eye of a friend of Jean Christie who was undergoing spinal tumor removal surgery. She called and says, I have a feeling you're going to need some help. And I know Jenny's just started this business, so uh, I called her right away. After hiring Dial a Daughter, Jean said the personal touch has made all the difference. She even vacuumed my house the day before I came back because she knows I had dogs and she knew I didn't want to come home to dog hair and everything else. So I think that's definitely a step above. And Jean says that Jenny has become more than just an assistant and a help around the house. She's become like family. Well, she's fun. I consider her a friend now. She, you know, we end up chatting. <laughs> She'll go to run an errand and we're there, what, half an hour, 20 minutes <laughs> later. But uh, yeah, no, she's cheerful and bubbly and easy. For Jenny, She's just happy to lend a hand. Again, that was Izzy Post reporting. So you might have noticed we're expecting a baby boy this holiday season, and you have a chance to guess along with me. How much will the baby weigh? If you're right, you could win a $50 gift card. Just head on over to our website. Of course, that is SueLandProud.com. Click on the contest tab. You'll find it there. It's called the Sophie's Mini-Me Baby Weight Challenge. And we take a live look outside right now in downtown Sioux City. Mostly sunny skies. Scott returns with one more check on your forecast just after this break. Before you wrap up here at five, let's check in now with Tim for what's coming up right here at six. Hi, Tim. Hey, Sophie. It's certainly been the kind of day that shouldn't keep people from getting out and casting a ballot in municipal elections that are underway today. Iowa voting locations will stay open until eight o'clock tonight. And a reminder that uh, that's an hour earlier than normal. One of the different laws that was uh, changed by lawmakers here in Iowa during the last session. Several other parts of the voting process also have been changed. We'll take a look at that and check just how busy the polls have been coming up at six. And a day after Bishop Heelan had its volleyball season end at the state tournament, six more Siouxland teams take to the tournament court looking for a spot in the state semifinals. Noah Sacco is in Cedar Rapids. He and Jake have the championships covered. That's coming up right after World News Tonight. I'll join you at 6. Until then, take care. See you then. We'll see you then. Yeah, we have a lot of great Siouxland representation going on right now there in Cedar Rapids, so a full uh, set of highlights. And honestly, if you do have to play sports on a bad day to do them indoors across Iowa, kind of a chilly day, even though we have had nice sun. Yeah, we've had some sunshine, Sophie, but high temperatures only around 50 for this afternoon. Tonight, it looks like clouds will start to slide in with a low temperature of 24. Tomorrow, we're on track for a high of 47 with some isolated rain showers. Accumulations are going to be minimal. Moving past that, we should expect to see highs in the mid 50s on Thursday, 60s for the weekend and a small chance of rain next week. All right, thanks, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll all see you here tonight at 6. And until then, have a great night, everyone.